What's up, y'all? So it's my day off. I did squats two days ago, deadlifts yesterday. I have squats tomorrow, deadlifts in two days from now. So I thought I'd get some active recovery and go to the park. During this time, I'm gonna give 15 YouTubers who are very, very underrated some much needed and well-deserved exposure. In the fitness industry, misinformation spreads so absurdly fast that I think it's important to give people doing things the right way more exposure. Now, before we get into the top 15, there are some honorable mentions who only got one vote, not the two needed to crack the top 15. The first is gonna be Izzy Naraves. Now, he didn't actually post recently, but he is one of the best powerlifting channels out there. And he has some really, really good information. So if you're interested in getting stronger, I think he's a really, really good person to follow. Maybe don't expect content going forward in the future, but his past content is definitely on point. Next, we have Jack PMG, and I don't know what PMG stands for. I don't, I don't think anyone knows what it stands for, but he is definitely putting out quality content. It isn't so much on the educational side of things, but it is definitely entertaining. It's a lot of this meme experience type of thing. So, you know, making fun of powerlifters and strongmen and gym fails. And while it isn't the most educational, it is certainly entertaining and very well produced. And he's been getting a ton of exposure recently. Crossing the street, I hope I don't get run over. How do they, how do influencers do this without just dying every other week? Next up, we have power weight training. How's the light? This is horrible lighting, isn't it? I'm so good at this. We have power weight training. He is a regular commenter on my channel. He is really good for home workouts. So if you're still in quarantine and you want to get bigger and stronger at home, I think he is definitely one to look out for. The next quick shout out, we have Natural Gallant Bodybuilding. Now he is definitely a little bit above the 25,000 limit and he only got one vote because of that probably, uh, but he is definitely a good channel to follow. I did a full video, I will link it up in a card and probably in the description below as well. Uh, if you want no BS, sound advice, I think he's a really good person to follow. He puts out content on a very regular basis and definitely a good one to check out. Jamal Browner also got a vote, which is pretty interesting. He is the all-time world record holder, I think, at the 110 kilo weight class. So it's cool to see someone who is legit one of the strongest people in the world, if not the strongest person in the world, the strongest sumo deadlifter of all time, putting out YouTube content. And I think that is a very rare opportunity to learn from someone who is legit the best of all time. Next quick shout out, we have Josh Cardos. Now he doesn't have that many videos, I think six or seven videos total, but the videos that I did see were quite good. And he talks a lot about how to make easy substitutions in your diet, how to lose weight sustainably. Again, just very reasonable, real, practical, and pragmatic advice. And for the final shout out, we have Magnus Vulcan. Vulcan up, he is a younger guy. I think he's in his teens, but it's good to get a perspective of a younger guy with regards to how the fitness industry is, because honestly, I'm 31 years old. I don't, I don't think some people realize that. My perspective is a lot different than someone who is a lot younger. So I think it's good to get a varied perspective of the fitness industry, especially if you are a teenager. All right, now with the shout outs out of the way, we have the top 15. Now, number 15 with two votes is the last natural, or at least it would be, if he didn't have a little bit above the 25,000 subscriber limit with 79,200 subscribers. So just a hair above the allowable limit. Uh, that being said, his editing is really good. Everything seems to be on point. He doesn't post as much as he used to, but I think there's still some good content in the past that you can look through. Someone actually said you can learn from his editing. I don't find that insulting at all. I'm always trying to learn, trying to grow, and you know, seeing other channels doing something different and doing something really unique with the editing, I think is really inspirational and cool. Number 14, we have Real Natural Bodybuilding. Now I've seen him comment a few times on my videos and looking through his content, he is definitely very, very underrated. All of his advice is very useful, very practical, and he has one of the most impressive natural transformations, honestly, that I've ever seen. And while he was going through puberty, puberty during this time, uh, 99 pounds to 240 pounds is super impressive. I also like that he calls out bullshit in the fitness industry and is one of the few people who is speaking out against SARMs, against steroids, and I think it's becoming so normalized and that's such a shame. You have, you know, fitness influencers who maybe they're not, they're not directly advocating SARMs, but they're talking about them in such a way that people nowadays, they think that you need them. They think that you cannot make progress naturally, that it's just a fool's errand to try to gain strength and size without 
actually taking these drugs. And that is definitely not the case. So I'll link his transformation in the description below. Definitely one to check out for. Also, he's really freaking strong. Doing 34 reps with 225 in the bench press is super freaking impressive. And considering he only has 166 subs, he honestly deserves more and show him some love. Drop him a sub. I'll link his channel in the description down below. Lucky number 13 is Revival Fitness. Now, I had actually never heard of his channel before, but after looking through it, I think it is one of the best BS calling out channels out there. He calls out, you know, the V shreds, the snake oil salesmen, and there are a lot. There are a lot of people selling crap in the fitness industry. So it's nice to see someone who really doesn't give a fuck. I mean, he clearly just doesn't give a shit. I mean, this guy has metaphorical balls of steel. I mean, he'll call out Greg Doucette, he'll call out basically anyone, and it's nice to see that actually because his heart is always in the right place, and I agree with everything that I saw in his videos. And honestly, the way things are in the fitness industry nowadays, people can't really call out other people. So for example, if someone says, being overweight is unhealthy, they usually get a ton of pushback. And so a lot of fitness influencers, they embrace this sort of healthy at any body weight. Uh, you don't have to work hard, just like focus on your mental health girl, that kind of thing. And so actually it's sort of nice seeing someone who just doesn't give a shit and is, you know, just speaking their mind and calling out these people who say, you know, accept yourself, love yourself, don't worry about your health, it doesn't matter, etc. And um, yeah, it's just good to see. Number 12 would be Alexander Bromley, except again, he is over the available limit. He is, I think, 31K subscriber, so just a little bit above that 25K limit. Uh, I wanted to keep this to relatively small YouTubers, and uh, but suffice to say, he is one of the best strength channels out there. I'm a big fan of his, I'm a big fan of his work. I bought his book and um, it's really, really good. And his channel as a whole has some of the best, most practical and useful information out there explained in a very, very simple way. And one thing that I like about him is that if you get a 20 minute video, you have 20 minutes of useful information. It's not something that could be condensed down into three or four minutes. Every single second is actually good. And I think a lot of fitness YouTubers definitely not me, sometimes just add in filler or they talk too much, whereas he gets straight to the point. All right, next up at actual number 12, we have the Strength Classroom at just under 2,000 subscribers, and he definitely deserves more. His content is very well produced, no noisy traffic in his content. Son of a bitch! Anyway, his content is very, very good. He does a lot of full workouts, and I don't really do a lot of full workouts, which I talked about before, but the way he does it is actually pretty cool. He actually tells you why he's doing every single exercise. He gets into a little bit of technique, a little bit of the overall structure of his programming. And I think, you know, that's the way to do it. If you're gonna do full workouts, it's not just like, and then I went, I did squats, and then I did deadlifts, and then I did bench press, and then overhead press. You're actually saying why you're setting up things the way you are and how it can actually benefit people in their own training. He's also really freaking strong. Here he is deadlifting 475 pounds, obviously, for a double from a deficit with spotless form, and then also, and then also 500 from a deficit as well. So he obviously practices what he preaches and he knows what he is talking about. So just got to the park. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wear a mask for the rest of the video. So it is what it is, regulations, right? <laughs> Another good thing about the Strength Classroom is his videos are about three to five minutes long, typically, making it a pretty good compliment to my own channel, which typically has longer videos. Number 11 is Misha or Misha Schultz. Now he is a weighted calisthenics specialist and his biggest video has 1.2 million views and it's of a weighted calisthenics competition. And I think this is awesome. I think, you know, having just powerlifting or just weightlifting is a little bit limiting. So seeing strongman, strict curl competitions, weighted calisthenics blow up is really, really cool. And he is actually brutally strong. He's doing 120 kilos in the weighted dip, which I'll admit it, it sucks to admit it, is better than my bench press. So that is obviously brutally strong. He's doing like 70 kilos in the weighted pull up. 20, 25 kilos in the weighted muscle up. And then they also tested the squat and he got 165 kilos. So that is really, really impressive. Obviously his physique is absolutely insane as well. Plus he does have good 
quality information. Now, one thing that I was curious about is that his total was 375 kilos. Now, some people can actually squat that. So what if someone comes in and just squats 380 kilos? Do they win the competition? And apparently you have to get at least one good rep on the muscle up, the pull up, and the dip. And most very, very uh, hefty, thick power lifters probably cannot do a muscle up. So I think this is a really cool competition and it's cool to see competitions that aren't just squat, bench, and deadlift. He also has a very popular transformation video where he shows how he actually improved his physique using exclusively calisthenics, which shows that you can develop a very impressive physique without, you know, bench press and deadlifts, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, a lot of power lifters are, are all about the squat, bench, and deadlift. You don't necessarily need those lifts to progress and improve, clearly. Number 10 is the Swole Fesser. Now he is definitely a strong guy. He totaled uh, almost 1,500 pounds his last meet at only about 170 pounds body weight. So it's about an eight, almost a nine times body weight total, which is extremely impressive. He has a bachelor's degree in exercise science or kinesiology as well. And he puts out a lot of really, really quality information as well. And his sort of motto is simple, specific, scientific. And unlike a lot of people who have a motto just like putting the science back in strength, he actually does stick to his motto very, very well. And all of the videos that I saw are very, very simple, very, very clear in his explanations. They stick to the topic at hand. The advice is very specific to the actual title and thumbnail of the video and it is also based in science. So he did a meet last week, he did really, really well, and so it's cool to see him getting some exposure. Now, delving into the top 10, we have FitLab at number nine. Now, there might have been some late additions to the vote. This is a fraud. Ballot boxes might not have been working correctly. We were getting ready to win this election. There may have been some mail-in votes. Frankly, we did win this election. Yeah! I'm not sure what exactly was going on there. For the good of this nation, this is a very big moment. But we're not going to stop the count because... We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning and add them to the list. So anyway, his channel is actually very, very underrated. If you are just a content consumer, you don't actually know how much effort goes into content. But if you are a content creator, you can tell much more easily. So when I watch an Athlean X video, I can tell it doesn't take a lot to make the video. He's just talking on camera. There's no real other edits or clips. Uh, it's very simplistic. There's no real flair to it, no cuts. There's not a lot of production value. It's not bad by any means, but compared to a FitLab video, nah. -uh. So if I see a video and there are cuts every few seconds, if someone is talking to multiple places in the video, I can tell that takes a lot of work to film, to script, to shoot, to edit, to upload. It just takes a lot more work. And it's clear that his content is very, very high quality. Plus the information is really good as well. And so when I see someone like that and they have under a thousand subscribers, I'm happy to shout them out because they are working hard and they actually deserve more exposure. So uh, I'll link one of his videos up above and you can judge for yourself if the video is quality or not. I think it is. Next up on the list, we have Ben Carpenter. Now out of all of the people on this list, he has been doing YouTube, I'm pretty sure by far the longest, 11 years. And you know, that is an impressive length of time. His videos originally were just him lifting, but he was damn strong then and I'm sure he's damn strong now. Uh, here he is doing some dips with some ridiculous weight. Uh, pull-ups as well, and just an all-around very strong guy. He's since transitioned into more informational and informative videos, and he does that very well as well. He also calls people out, uh, bullshit in the fitness industry, of which there is a never-ending tide. Also interesting is that he has 16.7k followers on YouTube, but 129k followers on Instagram. So he's actually quite a bit bigger on Instagram compared to YouTube. Holy shit, I'm pale. Now at number seven on this list, we have Ask Dr. Swole. Now he is a real doctor and he also is a real bodybuilder. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? He clearly practices what he preaches. So if someone is a doctor, like a chiropractor, they probably don't know anything about lifting weights. You're gonna, let's say you're doing bench press. You're gonna contract the pec, okay? So you're, you're coming out like this and then you're gonna come back, right? So if I'm coming down on a bench press, my pecs are lengthening. 
States, but this guy definitely does. Two of his videos actually blew up, getting 90,000 and 69,000 views respectively. Nice. On workout splits, on so on upper lower split, push pull legs, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's nice to see that kind of informational content getting good reach and good exposure. Also, he did an interview with John Meadows after his heart attack. And so it's cool seeing a bigger YouTuber and a smaller YouTuber sort of interacting and bridging that gap. I think all too often the bigger YouTubers won't collaborate with smaller YouTubers because they don't really have all that much to gain. I actually completely disagree. I think if someone is smaller, but they're putting in the work, they're putting in the time, the effort, eventually they will grow, hopefully. And I think it's important to give back to people who are smaller than you because it helps the industry as a whole. Next up, we have Brawny King Fitness. Now, he only has 458 subs, not 458K, just 458. Uh, however, his information is good. His editing is good. Everything is on point. I agreed with everything that I saw. In the Indian market, there's a lot of misinformation. You get these big YouTubers who just put out complete bullshit. And so it's nice to see someone in that market putting out good information. Now, he does have a little bit of an accent, which might throw you off and put you off his content at first, but he also is really funny and has a very, very unique and individual delivery of information. So, you have got a fat face. So, I'll definitely be checking out his videos in the future, and he's definitely one to watch out for. Next up, we have SSD Able. Now, SSD stands for Sustainable Self-Development, and he is one of the biggest podcast channels on YouTube. I remember watching him like five years ago. So he's had Dr. Eric Helms, he's had Mike Isertel, he's had a lot of people in the evidence-based scientific training community on his channel. So if you like longer form scientific content, he is definitely one to look out for. Skim through his content, see if any of the topics sort of catch your eye and just sort of set it and forget it in the background. My first few years, I did a lot of this with YouTube. So I would find a good podcast channel and I would just set it in the background and do other stuff and just absorb the information. So a lot of people ask me about my sources, like how did I learn so much about fitness, etc. And a lot of it was just YouTube, not books, not any like paid products, just YouTube, just finding quality information and consuming a shitload of it, hundreds of hours worth of listening. So I think this kind of longer form content, especially with some of the best in the business, is absolutely invaluable. Number four, we have Curling X at 6.8 thousand subscribers. Now, he is not just an anti Athlean X channel. I think that's what a lot of people associate him as, possibly due to the name, possibly due to a lot of his content actually being that. However, he also calls out other misinformation. He's called out Greg Doucette. He's called out other people as well. Plus, he does have some other content. He has a really, really good video on pressing about the different styles of overhead pressing. And um, his content is very polished, very accurate, very informative, very science-based. So even if you don't give a shit about Athlean-X or fake weights or any of that, I think he is a good channel to follow. Number three with 20,000 subs and 14 votes is Alec on Kiri. Now I did a full video on him before, I will link it up there. Needless to say, he's a badass. terms of strength, athleticism, speed, calling out bullshit, all of those, he is a really, really good channel to follow. Uh, I watch at least half of his videos. I have notifications on for him because I really appreciate his content and I learn a lot from what he is talking about. He generally gets right to the point, doesn't waste time at all. And uh, I think he is definitely one to watch out for in the future, although he has been doing it a while as well. Number two is... Is natural hypertrophy. Now, this guy is absolutely prolific. He works his ass off and clearly has an undying, burning passion for fitness and for bodybuilding. He's put out 850 something videos, which is absolutely insane. I mean, I've put out 225 this year, which is an insane schedule, assuming he's uploading all of his videos himself and doing all the editing, etc. His information, absolutely on point. I've already done a full video on him. 
definitely one to check out. Uh, he does comment a lot on other YouTube pages, uh, which kind of shows that the algorithm for YouTube is really messed up. You know, for someone to have this many videos, this good of information, and have YouTube just dick them over like this is actually pretty shocking. I'm gonna have a full video on the YouTube algorithm. It is actually pretty shameful what they've done. Uh, but anyway, definitely one to check out. Check out the video that I did on him up above. Finally, number one, drum roll please, drum roll please. Who won, who is the winner of the grand $10,000 cash prize? It's me. Yeah, it's, it's me. I got the most votes. I should have said, except for me, in the post. I assumed that people would realize that it wasn't about me. It shouldn't include me. But I didn't make the rules. This is a fraud. Okay, fine. I did make the rules. But this is an embarrassment to our country. But we cannot change the rules now. Frankly, we did win this election. <laughs> the votes have been counted, and I declare myself the winner. So, yeah. Suck it, everyone else on this list. I am the victor. Anyway, that is all for this video. I will link everyone mentioned in the description below. Definitely check them all out. They are all definitely very underrated and very much deserving of more attention on YouTube. And uh, I'm happy to push traffic to any of these guys' way. Finally, I just want to say to everyone on this list, I respect all of you highly for doing things the right way, for having integrity. Perhaps you see other creators exploding because they are putting out drama videos, natty or nots, clickbait bullshit, yet another goddamn video on biceps. And despite that, despite undoubtedly seeing that on the platform, you have stuck to your guns, you have done things the right way, you've put out quality informational content, and for that, I salute you. All right, that is all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace!